thanks for taking the time to speak to me. Absolute pleasure. I'm, I want to ask about the mood here. Having the points deduction reduced to six must have been huge. Yeah, uh, you know, we well, you got to expect that. You never know what's going to happen, so we just try and vote as much as we can on ourselves and as a team. And uh, But yeah, we managed to get four back, which is nice, but I don't know the outcome. I'm not a lawyer or anything, but getting four back gives us a little bit of a momentum boost to keep pushing forward. Yeah. Do you view yourself as a leader within this team? Because about a week and a half ago, I sat on that chair over there with Jared Brantway, and he was talking about this being his breakthrough season, but having Tarkovsky there next to him, having you behind is, yeah. a, is a huge bonus for him as a youngster. Yeah. Uh, got to be a leader in the team. Uh, enjoy being a leader. Uh, probably, I'm not Premier League, but overall matches. I'm over 400 games into my uh, career so far. So yeah, I've got a lot of experience and to help like young lads. But yeah, but Jared's, he's went out and done his um, like he's learning uh, over in PSV last season and Blackburn the year before and when he was a first when Angelotti was manager. He had his chance and he took his chance there as well. It's interesting you bring that up because I want to ask about your early days getting to where you are now. You went on a lot of loans. By the time you were 21, you played in the top five leagues in England. Yeah. That's a, that's a truckload of experience for such a young man at the time, 21. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was always the plan. Uh, but I, had, I execute the plan every every time. Every loan move, I had to do well. Every, uh, every, every loan move I went on, I had to be at my best at that time um, because I wanted to keep progressing, progressing and to get into the, um, keep pushing, get league two, league one championship, how to excel in them leagues and uh, do my best and they give me the platform to become a Premier League goalkeeper. What were some of the biggest lessons you, you took from all the loan moves that you had? Uh, the physical nature of the game or? Nah, uh, the speed picks up, the, you know, the, the, the yeah, the physical nature is quite big, but it's it's 100% 10 times better than playing under 21s football. Let me tell you that for free. Okay. Uh, when it comes to being a goalkeeper, there can only be one on the pitch for a side. You can have multiple defenders, multiple attackers and all of that. How important is the role of a number two to the number one to have a hierarchy within the side? Well, for the keepers. For the keepers, specifically. Yeah, it's a, you know, as a, goal, um, as a squad, you want to, as a good goalkeeper union, you want to have a, a good balance and you want to have a it's a good setup, you know, um, with the lads there. So we've got me, Joe, Lonners, and Billy Crowlin. And uh, yeah, it's about having working hard, but having that good vibe around it and just enjoy it. And trying to, in some ways, I guess, you set the number one. I, I remember Vitam Noni, mm -hmm. the days of Sunderland, and then he got injured. You came in and yeah. you know, never looked back, really. No, never. No. Once you're in the driving seat, you just got to keep pushing forward. Uh, random question, but why goalkeeping? Because not the most glamorous position on the pitch. I think the goal scorers tend to have that headline grabbing situation. Um my brother was six years old is six years older than me and he was a centre forward. So when we used to play out in the street, he he was obviously a striker so I was the daft lad diving about on the tarmac on the uh, on the floor. So nah yeah. But that that's pretty much my story then. Uh my brother's playing in the game and for the district at the time and there was a team training and needed a goalkeeper and I just went in and that was me so from five or six year old. And you excelled? Tried. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. England's number one now. Yeah. Uh, who was your idol? Who do you look up to? Um, as, I, as I grew up, you know, um, not younger ages, you know, you had the Schmeichel, you had Tommy Sorensen at Sunderland. But now, as I was getting older, like 14, 15, like teens, it, I was more looking at Joe Hart's plat, uh, pathway, you know, he was, he was in that England, I think he was... Um, Number one for England and the pathway took the Shrewsbury, then went to Birmingham, then went to Man City, then got loaned back out of Birmingham. I think them loan moves helped Joe Hart to become at Man City for 10 to 12 years and get 75 caps for England. So I always looked up at Harty. Uh, that's actually one of my questions. Joe Hart, he's announced he's going to retire at yep. the end of the season. Great servant to Manchester City, especially more than any other club. But what favourite memories do you have personally of Joe Hart? Yeah, just I remember like obviously looking up to him, and I'll remember I was either I think I was a youth team player and playing uh, at Sunderland, and he was playing Man City Sunderland at the stadium light, and I asked him for his shirt at the end of the game, and I've got it framed in my mum and dad's house. So like just little memories like that was good, but as a goalkeeper perspective, I think he's a top draw goalkeeper. I remember my first 
England camp, I got called up out. Um, one that I think Fraser Foster got injured and that went over for like two days. I think we played Slovenia away and he's pu pulled out a top world, his top left hand and uh, we drew nil nil and I think that kind of, that point was, I think it was enough to, for us to qualify for the World Cup in Russia. He had a presence as a goalkeeper, he still does have a presence as yeah. a goalkeeper. He's always full of energy and I can kind of see that with you sometimes. You're always full of energy on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm always, you know, the, yeah, engaged and switched on and uh, ready and that's, that's, that's my focus if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, one area of strength you have, I think, without question, is, is your distribution, your kicking. I've actually got some clips here. Everton topped the charts for long passes from set pieces, ending in the attacking zone with five goals. I'm just wondering, is it, is it, are you targeting someone here? Are you, are you going for a specific zone? These are all leading to goals, by the yeah. way. Um, well, tart has got a big slab head, hasn't he? So that's quite, uh, that helps. That, that's quite easy to get a target, but yeah. He's very, he's very good in the air talks, and uh, it's about me getting the right trajectory on the ball and um, Tarty getting the header. And it's just, you know, we know when we're playing this ball here, like we know Tarty's not going to score from it. It's about the second and third phase, like you're seeing there. It's about them phases where um, putting it in the right area, but it's about getting that second ball, you know, same as Jared's goal against Brighton. Yeah, very, very important, and I guess it's, it's a key facet of utilising your strength, which the managers recognise as well, for yeah. all the players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just want to get the best out of each individual to give the team a better chance of winning. Yeah. i got a, <laughs> a strange question here from a fan. His name is Chun Hang. He says, your hair is always in immaculate condition. I have to say it is as well right mm. now. It wasn't this morning. It wasn't this morning? <sighs> How long do you spend on your hair, and what do you use? What are the secrets of Jordan Pickford? It's about... Uh, Full can of hairspray and a bit of gel, and you just go <laughs> with a comb. But nah, uh, for games I'll, I like to be feel good and like get me hair done. But like training this morning, it's just all over the shop. Uh, it's is that something that has to be done when you go out onto a pitch? You have to have everything in place. Your hair has to be perfect. Does it give no, you it's not about like my hair. But uh, I mean, this in general, like you have a, yeah. a certain routine you have to follow. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I have me superstitions and my routine. Yeah. Okay, I guess the. No, but it's just because my hair's long. If, it, if I chore back and stomp, then it wouldn't be so uh, difficult to do. Okay, uh, I need to ask penalties, not for you taking them, but how much research goes into every game you head into in case you have to face a penalty or in a case of a, of a tournament where there might be a shootout? Yeah, uh, enough for myself, not so much because of the staff. You know, at both club and country, they put a lot of work into the, the research to give us the platform and um, then it's about me doing my research on what they've given me to have a look at a bit of homework obviously and uh, yeah um, but the staff behind the scenes do a lot of work and it, it's given given to us on the iPad and it's about us what we feel on that day. All right uh, final couple of things it's Man United next is this one of those games that every player looks forward to just on a personal basis to be able to go to, to grounds like that historic grounds like that and play football. Yeah, it's, it's always good to go to Old Trafford, you know, the, when the, I think they come out of Stone Roses uh, out the tunnel and get you a good vibe going early doors. And um, no, nah, but you know, it's, it's always going to be tough. Uh, but them, the, them, them, these are the reasons you're a footballer, you know, stand up and uh, go and put a performance on at Old Trafford. Team always comes first, without question. Three points, that's what matters. But do you care about individual awards like Golden Gloves? Because you're in contention there. Yeah, I'm in contention, but it's a, it's a team effort. And uh, I always focus on what the, helping the team out and whatever happens with the individual stuff will be not just because of me or anybody. It'll just be the team at work.